Grammarly started out as a grammar and spell checker. Now it's so much more. Using its AI tools, you can brainstorm articles and blog posts, you can improve the quality of your writing, and you can edit and publish something much faster. It's incredibly powerful, and I'm going to show you how I use Grammarly to improve anything that I write and publish online. In this video, I'm going to give you 15 different ways you can use Grammarly's AI to write. To do it, you're going to need a premium subscription to Grammarly. That's because a premium subscription, which costs $30 per month, will give you access to its AI tool. Once you've taken out a premium subscription, you can use Grammarly on your mobile, on the web, or on the desktop. It only takes a few moments to set up, and I have another video on the channel where I go into detail how to do just that. Now, I do have a discount, which is an affiliate link, and I'll include that in the notes below this video. The easiest way to use Grammarly to improve your writing is to take an article, paste it into Grammarly and let it scan through what you've just written. Then it'll propose suggestions that you can accept or reject with a click. Grammarly's AI Grammar Checker has four different reports that you're going to want to pay attention to. Correctness, clarity, engagement, and delivery. If you're short on time, simply review the correctness report. These are the spelling and grammar checkers that Grammarly will suggest fixes for. If you have more time, review the clarity report, that is words and phrases underlined in blue. These are sentences and phrases that are a little bit unclear and Grammarly will propose full sentence rewrites. The suggestions from the engagement and delivery report depend on how you tailor your goals in side of Grammarly. And in my Grammarly demo video, I go into detail about how you can set this up. You can use Grammarly AI to improve the quality of your work. To show you how this works, here's an article I wrote some time ago about using fear and anxiety as fuel for creative work. So here is a paragraph that I was struggling with. I said I gradually discovered the problems creatives have isn't what people think of them or their work, it's getting their attention in the first place. Now the Grammarly Grammar Checker has suggested a sentence rewrite that I can accept. However, if I highlight this particular paragraph and if I click on the AI icon, I get access to a number of different options. So firstly, Grammarly has proposed a way that I can improve this sentence. And if I'm happy with this suggestion, I can simply click insert and Grammarly will overwrite what I've written with its suggestion. On the other hand, if my article is too long and if I'm having trouble shortening specific sections in my article, I can click on shorten. And Grammarly will give me a one sentence option that I can insert into my article. This is quite useful during the editing process. In fact, there are over a dozen different AI prompts that I can use to rewrite parts of my work. So I can ask Grammarly to make my content sound more descriptive or more detailed, or I can even simplify it. And I can also ask Grammarly to rewrite sections of my work for a general audience or for an expert audience. Again, a real time saver during the editing process. You can also use the generative AI tool as a type of research assistant while you're working on any piece of content. So in this particular article, I've referenced the famous investor, Charlie Munger. But let's say the reader didn't know who Charlie Munger is. Well, I could spend a few moments researching his biography online, or I could open up generative AI. and I could put in a prompt like, give me a three sentence biography of Charlie Munger. Grammarly will take just a second and then it'll give me some text I could potentially insert into my article. Much like with ChatGPT, the generative AI tool can also help you with mundane parts of writing. For example, writing 10 different headlines for the article in question. So in this case, I've pasted in, suggest 10 blog post headlines for this article. Grammarly will take just a moment to come up with some suggestions. Unveiling the philosophy of Charlie Munger, the investment strategy of Charlie Munger. So lots of different headlines that I could potentially pick from and insert into my article. And of course, I can ask Grammarly to shorten or lengthen these, change the tone and so on. You can also use the generative AI tool to come up with blog post outlines and article outlines. So I pasted in the prompt, give me a blog post outline for an article explaining who Charlie Munger is. Once I click on this, Grammarly will come up with a bullet point outline that I could potentially follow if I wanted to write an article all about Charlie Munger, or I could potentially give this outline to a writer on my team. Again, it's quite similar to ChatGPT. In fact, I believe some of it is powered by ChatGPT, but the fact that it's built right into the Grammarly app, and again, you can do this on the desktop as well, is a bit of a time saver. 
Here's another way I'm using Grammarly AI to improve my writing. This is an email that I'm sending to subscribers all about how I got started writing online. Ask any good email marketer and they'll say you should write five or 10 different subject lines. Writing multiple subject lines can be painful. So if I highlight the text in question and use a prompt like, write me 10 variations of this subject line, Grammarly will give me a few different options that I can potentially use. Then I can pick the best one and insert it into my article or even insert two or three of them that I can test with my email marketing tool. You can also use Grammarly AI as a type of research assistant that can help you paraphrase third party sources. So here's an article on the BBC that I was reading this morning. I could take a section from this article, head over to Grammarly, paste in a section from the article, click on generative AI and then ask Grammarly to shorten this text. This could be useful if I want to paraphrase something that I've read elsewhere online. But just remember, if you're going to do this, you still want to include your sources. If you're going to paraphrase like this, just remember to include links or citations to your original source so you don't get accused of plagiarism. Grammarly has support for a citation manager built into certain websites, but with its AI tool, you can actually just paste in a URL and then ask Grammarly to turn the URL into a citation which you can quickly insert into your article. I found again, this can save a lot of time during the research process. Grammarly AI has also a neat little feature called App Actions. Basically, once you're using a rich text editor like Apple Notes, which I have open here, an email client or Google Docs, you can trigger Grammarly to insert GIFs and images into your articles. It's a real time saver. So simply open up the Grammarly Assistant and then type in GIF to access Giphy. And then you can search for all of the trending GIFs and paste them directly into your content. It's pretty much the same if you want to get royalty free images from Unsplash. Open up Grammarly, type in images and then type in on splash and then search for something that's related to whatever it is that you're working on. There are dozens of different app actions that you can pick from once you've connected to the relevant service. So you can connect Grammarly to your Calendly account. You can also connect Grammarly to Google Docs if you want to search for files and also to project management tools like Jira and Asana and even monday.com. As a creator and as somebody writing online, I've got the most use from Unsplash and from Giphy app actions, but the Calendly integration is pretty good too. There's a lot of controversy about using AI to create content. Well, there is an option inside of Grammarly where you can acknowledge that you've used its AI content generator. So if I scroll down to acknowledge Grammarly generative AI use, it will provide me with the prompts that I've used to create this particular piece of content. You can also use the generative AI tool to come up with some email responses. So this particular person has asked me if they can publish an article on my site. I don't usually allow this and I don't always reply to these emails, but if I did want to reply, I can simply click on the generative AI tool and it'll give me two different prompts to pick from, decline the proposal or agree to the proposal. So in this case, I'm just simply gonna click decline uh, and then I can click insert or I can use the Grammarly tone detector to make my response more friendly more persuasive or even more negative. And then once I'm happy with it, paste it into my email and then simply click send. So this could be a bit of a time saver for me or for a team member. You can use Grammarly AI to save time writing job descriptions. Let's face it, who likes spending time writing these types of things? I put in a prompt that says, create me a job description for a podcast editor. The Grammarly AI tool just took a few minutes to generate this. I inserted it into Apple Notes. Now all I have to do is review and tidy this up and then I can go ahead and advertise. You could also use Grammarly to write Instagram captions and other types of social media posts. So here's a tweet that I wrote recently, which got a good few impressions, all about the best note taking apps. Now I'm gonna go ahead and post this on Instagram. I could spend a few minutes figuring out what to say, or I can open up Grammarly and type, write me an Instagram caption about finding note taking apps. Now Grammarly will give me something that I can insert into Instagram. All I need to do is review it and see if I'm happy with the hashtags and with the content. Now, when I use AI tools like this, I always consider this a first draft. In other words, it's better than staring at the flashing cursor or the blank page, but I will edit and put in some personal impressions. You can also use Grammarly to help with brainstorming. As an example, I want to publish a series of articles on my site all about copywriting for beginners. So I put this prompt into Grammarly. Help me brainstorm a series of articles all about this topic. Grammarly took just a few seconds and gave me 10 different articles all about copywriting for beginners. 
that I could potentially write myself or commission. You could also use Grammarly to help you think through what you want to do next. So I put in this prompt, help me brainstorm ways I can repurpose all of this great content that I'm going to write or publish. And Grammarly came up with 10 different ideas. I could create podcast episodes, infographics, blog posts, videos, or I could even run a workshop about copywriting for beginners. So if you're working on some type of creative project, consider how Grammarly can help you brainstorm and it could be a great starting point. I spend a lot of time writing articles and blog posts and sometimes it's a bit of extra work to figure out what to say on Twitter or X about these articles. So I could scan one of my articles and use a prompt like, can you write me 10 short tweets based on this article? No hashtags, be direct. Now Grammarly will give me 10 different tweets that I could potentially use as prompts. I could, for example, expand on each one of these tweets or post them as is to see how they perform. If you need help with prompts that you're putting into Grammarly AI, head over to grammarly.com forward slash AI writing tools and you'll see lots of different use cases, some of which I've shown you in this video. I particularly like the one for resume skills. So let's say I wanted to apply for a job as a copywriter. If I put in copywriter as my job title, the AI assistant will give me a number of different skills that I can add to my CV or my resume. Those are just some of the ways I'm using Grammarly's AI assistant to help me with writing and other parts of my writing business. Clearly, there are lots more ways you can use AI if you get creative or even if you ask Grammarly. You will, of course, need to take out a premium subscription. So do remember, I have an affiliate link which will save you 25% on the cost of Grammarly. And I put a link to that in the notes below this video. And if you've got questions about Grammarly or you'd like to understand more of these different ways you can use it, let me know and I'll help you if I can.